Anyways. Well, but not. Uh -oh. Now you got it. <laughs> now you're going to be recording. I might change my mind if I really heard everything yes, else. That would be correct. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's not all on topic either. I'm partway out in the garden, too. So then I'm going to be writing down what popped into my mind and what I'm going to do next. Yeah. So it's all, it's all. Well, at least you don't forget anything. That's right. This one. Right. If I re if I go remember to go back and look at what I have. Yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, keeps me from. Well. Also, I would fidget because I don't sit well. Oh, I could bring That's some finished. fidgets for you. We yeah. used to give them to kids and yeah, the I probably. If you'd like to have some, I, I think I'll be okay. Some people like to crochet, so yeah. people do all kinds of cool stuff. All right, I think we finally are in business here. Um, I don't know if anybody has been remoting in but this records the study so people can sell these and hey barb yes <laughs> oh uh for um remoting i just started it so i have started the meeting so let me let's do this though there's a little Little cool way I can do this. Oh, he link. What? And then how about if I um, try a specific email? Is it is it is it just that it doesn't work or is it just um let's see uh, oh. I don't have to remember anything if I have a phone. <laughs> Oh, okay. I don't know either, because sometimes I'll start the wrong meeting, you know, um, and it'll say this meeting's already in progress or whatever. Um, all right, so let me, let me, I, I'm going to send you the meeting link for, so just give me your email and it'll come up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what Hazen? Sorry. The Hazen. One, two, three. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Uh, and I'll let me just, you can stay on while I send this. And then, and then, uh, you got it okay perfect you're not used to being here without 15 so that might mean that the other link <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Oh. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm waiting to I'm waiting to let you in, and then I'll hang up. Yeah. I love it. Some of these things are very good. Some of these things are very good. Some of these things are very good. Okay. Thanks, Barb. Okay. Mm -hmm. I gotta go right to work. There we go. So we got Barb and Doug in. All right, everybody. Okay. Why isn't this disappearing? This little task. There's Ron. Okay. Hey, just gonna see. I got him. Right, Bill. My goodness sake. Yeah. I know. I was, you know, yeah. and the roadblocks everywhere I went. Roadblocks. Yeah. We don't have the person here with the real Bible. Uh oh. I know. Where is that guy? Oh yeah, that's right. Ross and Carrie. It is the real Bible. Right? Well, I mean, the, the young guy. He's <laughs> usually, you know, he's got a little bit of Bible, but he's got we'll do a five shot. Yes. Yeah. He's really into it. Cool. <laughs> he's not here. Trying to figure out why. So we can just say what we want. Lock taskbar. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
And now I just have to see if I can find where the share screen is. There we go. Yes. And we are finally ready to go. All right. Welcome, everyone. You remember, you know, remember the old senior pastor, dinosaur guy, Bill Crabtree? Oh, <laughs> uh, goodness. Um, good to be back. Oops. Uh, and challenging gospel reading as we're in the sixth chapter of John for like four weeks. You should know amongst pastors uh, who preach on the lectionary because it's at least this way every year or maybe two of the three three-year lectionary cycles. So we're on a three-year cycle, A, B, C, and then they disperse John all through the three years. You get they, they stick John in everywhere. and then, But then, like, the first year is Matthew, second, Mark, third, Luke. I don't know why but on all the way throughout um, the three years. And so I, I think summer, uh, or it, it took, you know, in the middle part of the season after Pentecost, or the Sundays after Pentecost, uh, is the sixth chapter of John. So, so yes, go ahead. Are our fellow Lutheran churches... Do they have the same stuff? Like, would Vinland have the same reading? They would, okay. and they do. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Vinland, it, it's not quite a for sure deal because um, there are a number of different lectionaries. Yeah. Uh, and we use what's called the Revised Common Lectionary. It was an effort of the Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, Lutheran, uh, Catholic, all to... Um, all to get on the same page. Also, the Catholic Church would have the same readings. Almost, wow. but 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 they um, the cat. But there's going to be little differences. Yeah. Sometimes, like one Sunday, they cut the gospel yeah. shorter than the. But for the most part, we're all on the same page. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know now it used to be there was a Lutheran out. lectionary yeah. and Episcopal yeah. and a Catholic. Yeah. And, but the, the Roman Catholic probably was more instrumental in this three-year lectionary that we have now. What would that do? Revised common lectionary. Yeah. Did I hear anybody in the background there? <coughs> nope. Okay. I am reading controls. Okay. So actually, let me do this. Let me put everybody over here. So I can see Thank you so much. Sharon and Doug, and then I'll pin this so this will be in the top. Okay. Yeah. All right. So do you all know each other? Do you all know names? Let's introduce yeah. each other because um, just go this way. I'm Teresa Walton. And that's his name. Sure, <laughs> just names are. Linda Kelly. Linda Nelson. Right, you know oh, Indy Dodge. Oh. Al Ot I'm Loretta Nelson. Loretta, Pastor oh. Bill. And at home, we've got Barb and Doug Hazen. Yeah, sorry. I, I was trying to make it big, and I made it small. And now it's so small, I can't read how to make it big. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Usually, it's, it's, it's a bigger picture. We can read the sharing. Oh, We're yeah. still here, but... Um, Okay. Um, I Are you on a PC? Yeah. Okay. You probably minimized it, which is the, the three buttons at the top right, and you want to go to the middle button and press that again. Okay. I'll see. It's so tiny, I can hardly even see the, the buttons. <laughs> I I just don't know what what you accidentally did. Um, well, it was sort of on purpose, but I thought maybe you would maximize instead of minimize. 
See what's <laughs> yeah, you should be able to just repress that same button and then it would maximize out again. But um, you also, trying the right click is always sometimes helpful. Um, Might give me uh, a menu. Can you see us? Right, we can see you perfectly. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. That's yeah, good. We can, see you, we can see you and hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what? While you work on that, I'm gonna you just keep working. Um, and then uh we're gonna forge on here while you okay, try and get it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to hold everything up. <laughs> That's okay. Um, um okay, so <clears throat> three year lectionary these Sundays, usually in August, we they want us to read the sixth chapter of John. <laughs> it's a great chapter. But uh, it's also one that's fairly controversial for all kinds of reasons. And it really gets controversial now that we get to this part of chapter six. So we Is it because of bread? It's because of what he says about bread. Not bread. Well, well, we'll just hold on and read it. And then you'll know. You'll know oh. why. You'll know why very quickly. Um, so I think we start in verse 51. Let's see here. Vice common lectionary. The living bread came down from heaven. That's it. Yeah. Yes. 51. Uh, 51 through 58. Yeah. And we're going to go through 59. So, because the reason they do the end of the paragraph is that was last week's text. So they do the first verse to kind of connect us. So we we but we started in the beginning of the chapter six and then we mm -hmm. just walking through. So if you weren't here last week, um, you know, that that's probably important. So we'll start with verse 51 and then we will go to 58. Who would like to read? Oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't pray yet. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this wonderful day. And thank you for a wonderful moment to a be in your word together. I give thanks for each person here and pray that this time will be a blessing to us. And certainly for me, as I prepare to bring your word to your people someday, we pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Readers, reader. I could read the oh, Go for it. Go for it. Linda. As long as it's not a lot of weird names, I can do it. Okay. <laughs> I think verse 51. Yeah, okay. no problem. I am the living bread within which I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore stove, strove amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. That is, this is, this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. You want to read it 59? Yes. These things said he in the synagogues as he taught in Capernaum. Yeah, <laughs> good job, Linda. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay. So now, Cindy, do you know why this is controversial? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know it's, I mean, I've. Yeah, you've read it. I've many read times. it many yeah. times, yeah. and it's never bothered me. Yeah. Well, let's talk about but, but how, how I we can. see new disciples or new people, it's going to be offensive to them. Um, yeah. And even though we don't get this, the next pericope, which is next Sunday, and Kathy Bowman is going to be mm -hmm. preaching and, and presiding, uh, one of our retired pastors next week, because Jonathan is gone on, I think, 
is it the backpack? It's just mm -hmm. some other trip. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the men at the men's retreat. So mm -hmm. Kathy's gonna gonna mm -hmm. preach next week. So I don't know if she'll be in to plead man. That's something I have to think about actually now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta think about it now that I think about it. Um so this is where it picks up next week. And maybe it's just good just to bring this in. Um, when the disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it about eating flesh and drinking blood? You know, this is this is really difficult. But Jesus, knowing himself that the disciples were grumbling about it, said to them, do you also take offense? Um, what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. Flesh is no help at all. It's another passage that's been completely misunderstood. Um, uh, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Okay, now that's key. I, I'm going on because it's key to understand what he's already said. Because he's talking about eating, right? And now he's talking about what? Believing. Believe. Okay. So... Um, for Jesus at the beginning, those, et cetera, betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it's granted to him by the Father. Or, the, or some translation will say, drawn to me by the Father. And, and then we hear that many of the disciples turned back and no longer followed him. So a lot of threw in the towel at this point. And you know that, that hallelujah that we sing each Sunday before the gospel reading? Hallelujah, <laughs> what? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have this is where that word comes from. Oh, wow. Because you know, that's what Peter says to Jesus. Jesus says, Are you gonna go to? Are you gonna throw in the talent? Peter says, Whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and yeah. you have the what? Words of eternal life. Jesus is talking about eating, and now he's talking about words, words. of eternal life. Okay, so all of this. It's even though we break up the sixth chapter of John to do four sermons on it, you really need it all. So I one, I always like to help you understand where liturgy comes from. And that alleluia, the language comes right here from the sixth chapter of John. At a time when everybody else was going, I'm out of here. You know, so what do we do before we hear the gospel? Whom shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. So that's kind of a cool connection. But now, going back, this is a hard saying. How first, there's the 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 Jewish, the Judeans, uh, the Jewish people of, that are listening to Jesus. How can he give us his flesh to eat? Um, I'm pretty sure this is the word sarx in Greek. Flesh. Yes, uh, sarka. Um, so, you know, I most of the time when I, when people read this, they go, are you Christians cannibals or what? <laughs> so, so, what do you think Jesus is talking about? You don't have to worry about getting this. No wrong answer. Just, you know, a lot of, what do you think? You, what, if, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about, you know. <laughs> I find it confusing. Yeah. But I'm going back to the church services itself. Communion has always been very important to me. Right. And I do feel that God, his presence is in that. Yes. In some manner. Yes. So, I mean, to me, that's really important. Yes. And But hearing the word is also important. And I, I still, I find that these, I find it confusing. Sure. And I, don't, I really can't hold it against the disciples for not understanding. Right. Because, yeah, good point. Because <laughs> this is pretty complicated stuff. Yeah, it is. It is. It's like, whoa. What are you talking about here? And um, and it's hard for us not to think about the Lord's Supper when we hear him talk like this. Right. Now, the interesting thing is the Lord's Supper is not in the Gospel of John. 
Yeah, <laughs> but I, but that or is it? I or is it? Yes, yeah. and you're Linda, you're getting us right to an interpretive turn. Yeah, that that's really important. It is really hard for us to not hear this and go, oh yeah, that's what we believe that the bread is really his body and blood, and maybe it's important to say. It's it's a hand this I forget the, the title of the, 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 the word in English where you have two things speak to one reality and it's um it's a way of saying the whole person. Yeah. Well, flesh and blood. That's that's what we are, flesh and blood. So it's the whole person. Um so one way to look at this is you know, in that respect, that it, it's he's using a term to talk about himself. And he, but, and he does shed his blood for us. Right, right. And yet right. we are fed by word. Right, right, right. right. Kind of all wishes together. Uh, well, it kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, good, good. Other thoughts? Keep it going. Yeah, we're doing good. Well, this is sort of where the rubber hits the road for the incarnation. Like, why did God have to be incarnate? In the first place. There you go. Now that's a really important word to, to throw on the frying pan. No. <laughs> to 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 put in no better analogy would be to put in the mix. You know, uh, flesh and blood. What do we think of incarnation? So notice, I, as I've already kind of give tip tipped your you know thinking a little bit here that when he's talking about eating yeah. then he comes right around and he's talking about believing yeah and um so the hearing is in the middle of that and then the hearing is in the midst of it so you got hearing eating and believing all mixed up like you said but we got now not just believing but believing flesh and blood so one way to come at this is that's the key that maybe Jesus isn't, I know, directly thinking about the Lord's Supper at all. He's talking about incarnation. It's one thing that there were a lot of people that believed in Jesus. He was a spirit. Yeah. He was a spirit. He was a ghost. He was a apparition. He was uh, just a, you know, uh, you know, Early on, people had trouble believing he was God. Later, yeah. in the 200, 300 centuries later, they had trouble believing he was human. Yeah. He was just this divine being that just was in the appearance. Yeah. He was in the appearance of flesh and blood, but he was really just a spirit. You know, this is the Gnostic Gospels. Uh, the, the one gospel has Jesus coming out of the cross and laughing. <laughs> you think you got me, but I'm a spirit. Ha ha ha. That's this is actual one of those, you know, uncanonical gospels. Um, but see, so they had trouble believing he was really human. Yeah. He was God man. Interesting in the Gospel of John, which may be later than some of the others, um that you almost get the sense that what's being dealt with is that inability is the the severance of divinity and humanity and think about uh first john anyone that does not believe that jesus came in the what flesh yeah. does not receive so that one way to look at this chapter is that's what's being talked about it's talking about the doctrine of the incarnation and the doctrine of faith. Um, so that Jesus is speaking symbolically of eating here. He's not talking about being a cannibal. <laughs> and yeah, please, let, yeah, this one, but yeah. I was just thinking of when you started, when we started this, it's kind of like in the middle of a thought. Mm -hmm. But if I backed up, could I... Actually, this is my great great grandfather's Bible, so oh, uh, I actually I'm write in it. I mean, yeah, I, that's I cool. actually all the important things. I, I just backed it up to 47. 47, yeah. I think you'll understand better. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Yes, your fathers did eat manna 
in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Yes. That's the starting of. Well, right. Yeah. Exactly. So you can understand it a little bit. Better. Yeah. So eating and believing. Yeah. Is is the uh, is are equated. Right. And so how do you how and then so how do you eat Jesus in this context? How do you consume him? How do you take him in? Well, you it's, have to... it's spiritually consuming, spiritually eating, right? I believe in this chapter, that's what's being talked about. Yeah. Well, is there a physical eating too? Because is he, when he talks about himself as bread, I mean, he's going to be devoured on the cross. His physical life is going to be devoured. So is he, uh, you know, his flesh, I mean, this is incarnate God. So his flesh is going to go away. I mean, we know it doesn't. We know that. Right. It rises again, but um, is he talking about his death here too? I think in as much as it's talking about the incarnation, absolutely. His birth, life, death. Because that's birth. the way we have, I mean, that that's the way we have this eternal life is because of the exchange of sin for righteousness on the cross, his flesh takes on our sin. Um, I mean, this isn't totally fleshed out, but right. No, no, <laughs> but I'm <fine>. but I'm <laughs> no pun intended. Yes. But it seems like there's something about, you know, a, the flesh is a temporary thing, that, and the flesh is what's being, the, if it's bread, that's what's being eaten um, metaphorically, but also in reality on the cross, it sort of gets eaten too. Death eats it. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. I don't know. Cool, cool, cool. I, I mean, the essentialness, the cross is definitely included in flesh and blood because flesh and blood is Jesus' story. It's what happened. Yeah. And, but it's also his, you know, born of a Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius. All, all of that is the flesh and bloodness that we're asked to believe and that's essential um, for, um, you know, eternal life. And, and that, so faith isn't just in some mis mystic savior, it's faith in a real flesh and blood person. And that that person is sent from God and is God. So the two together. So we get all these incredible doctrines. You actually also have the Trinity because you got the Father and you got the Spirit and you got the Son, you know, dancing through this chapter and you've got uh, incarnation. And then this is where Luther goes. He goes to the to the doctrine of faith, which I preached on last week. But he, as he gives his flesh and blood for us weeks. on the cross, he's saying you don't have to like some indigenous people would kill animals for a sacrifice for their flesh and blood. He says, no, my flesh and blood is your salvation, not taking this. That's right. We don't have to, or something we don't have to so kill animals anymore and shed people, their blood. People were doing that. Sure. I mean, it, well, in Jesus' is like they were in the temple. Yeah. Hundreds and, and, and of thousands of animals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All over the world. People. Right. And so people do that. They have this sense that of atonement yeah. and that that the shedding of blood, it's like that blood instead of me, you know, there's all well, kinds of ways. Of that. Yes. I'm, I'm your sacrifice. It, once and for all. The book, need to do all that yeah, stuff. the book of Hebrews makes that really clear yeah. that this is the once and for all. It's so is done. he kind of alluding to that in this? I case? think uh, you all, and that goes to what maybe Kim was getting after too. I think Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That that he is, um, you know, that he will he will lay down his life, flesh and blood, yeah. for us. That's what he did in our place. Yeah. To take away our sin and give us his righteousness. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's that's all there. Yeah. yeah. I yesterday when we were looking at this, I looked up these verb tenses too, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm just a hack with like, yep. verb tenses, but. Yeah. 
um, in 57, as the living father sent me, I live because of the father. And then he will, uh, you know, whoever feeds on me will live because of me. And whoever feeds on bread will live forever. So that's future indicative. Mm -hmm. And does that, is it, so indicative is like a certain reality, right? Like it's really true. It's usually it's a done deal type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's. And it's, so in the future with a done deal thing, that's promise, right? Right. Yeah. Nice. Love it. Yeah. And so the will live is what they add. You know, let me see this live. Is that also present active indicative? So, um, yeah. So. That is actually really helpful, Kim. And I live, that's indicative. It's a done deal, it's happening, but it's uh, present. <laughs> In other words, present tense, because of the father who feeds on me. So whoever, or I'm sorry, father. So whoever feeds on me, well, he also will live, will live now, future, but it's a done deal. So it is a promise because of me, yes. And this is the way the kingdom, not like the bread of the fathers will be there. Feeds on me. On this bread will live forever. So yes. Um, again, and then you've got abides. So that's another really important word. And that's, you know, um, present active and dictated. So, so what we have now is abiding with God and what we will have in the future. <laughs> and we have eternal life, but then we'll be raised up at the last day. Um, and live in that sense. So we live now as an abiding with Jesus, but in the age to come, yeah. Very helpful. That's cool. Yeah, I have my little indicative uh, filter on here on all these mm -hmm. these verbs here. Yeah. Um, interesting. That is cool. Good job. Good job. Very interesting. What else? Let's see. So let's go back to the Lord's Supper. Because I can talk about this forever. Because, <laughs> um, I love to talk about this. So is Jesus truly present in the bread and the wine of the Lord's Supper? <clears throat> the reform, the more radical reformers seeing that Jesus is talking about a spiritual eating. And then it'll say the spirit is, the flesh is of no avail, the spirit is. Uh, say, that's what's happening in the Lord's Supper. So when I say radical reformers, these are the, the folks that, you know, are really the precursors of the Baptist and Pentecostal kind of side of things. Because what do Baptists and Pentecostals and then also with the Reformed Church, like uh, Calvin would you know, fit in this group. Um, so Presbyterians even, and uh, not Methodists, too, it's different. They have a different history. They come out of the Episcopal Church, kind of, or the Anglican Church. But, um, but the Reformed and Presbyterian churches will talk about Jesus being spiritually present in the bread. That's, they, they, they say he's present in the bread of life. But they say spiritually, you, if, in a Presbyterian church, I doubt you will ever come to receive the Lord's Supper and they say the body of Christ given for you. No. I don't think so, but I, I could be wrong. That was part of the Lutheran Presbyterian dialogue. We were trying to get them to elevate the Lord's Supper. And, you know, I was hoping we'd get some of their brilliant organizational strategies. But anyway, I'm not sure any of that happened. But, but uh, you know... Uh I, I, I was a Presbyterian many years, and uh, when we had communion, they, I, my last recollection at CKPC was, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Ah, so they do say that. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. Somebody there, but it's a shadow. Oh, that's Sharon. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you can't, can't see her. Can't that's, see okay. Face. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not, on my, I'm not visible today. <laughs> That's okay. okay. <laughs> that's, <what it> goes. <laughs> that's okay, Sharon. That's okay. just fine. kind of a voice <laughs> kicking in. <laughs> um, in the Methodist the Church, used to say this is the bread of life and the cup of salvation. The bread of life and the cup of salvation. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, Bert, I think Bert grew up. Bert grew up with a total Methodist background. I mean, uh, his grandfather started churches all over the Midwest back in the early 1900s, yeah. and uh, he was very. Uh, I think he was on board with with the uh, the way that you're describing it for the Methodists, um, because my I started out as an American Baptist, and and I don't re remember anything really being talked about as to whether that is actually flesh or spiritual or whatever. We didn't right. really have that many discussions in the 40s and early 50s. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, you know, what I love, there's a reason I like to talk about this. A lot of people feel uh, so, be, period reason I like to talk about this, but a lot of people feel these differences are just one more expression of Christians not getting along and for witness to the world and all this. Um, I think we can still have these differences and disagreements and still be a good witness if we don't condemn everybody for it, which is what they did 500 years ago when they were having these issues. But, but I want to I bring it up because the people who reject that the Lord's Supper is the real presence of Jesus mm -hmm. go right to John 6. And they say, see, obviously Jesus isn't talking about re real present. This is just a spiritual thing. So Calvin would say Jesus is present in the spirit. Well, you know what Luther said about this text? This is nothing to do with the Lord's Supper. And we have to decide, well, is he right or what's, you know, where we get the doctrine of the real presence is one little word in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and in Paul, because Paul says the same thing, is. This is my body. So Zwingli and some of these other radical reformers jumped in and said, no, that means represents. Luther mm. said that. Look, I know what is means. Well, Catholics believe, yeah, so it really is. So, and and so, are, how are Lutherans and Catholics different? The difference is that the Roman Catholic Church goes to Aristotle and uses this, the notion that something can look like something but be something else. And they call that transubstantiation. Yeah. I know I'm confused. On there you go. So, but I'm going to clear this up for you. And then at the end, I'm going to show you that just trust what Jesus said and don't worry. And my dad always took us to uh, the Lutheran church over there off 11th Street. Yeah. Every Sunday, catechism on Wednesdays and yeah. Saturday. Yeah. But all my friends in junior high and high school were Catholics. Yes. So I would go to church with them when yeah. I got older. Yeah. So, and they, they didn't preach the same. There's some differences. Kind of like, There's definitely some differences. Kind of like. Sure. And the reason you get confused is the Roman Catholic Church says that it actually yeah. changes. Yeah. Bread and wine is no longer bread. Well, it looks like bread and wine. Yeah, but well, it's transubstantiated. It's yeah. changed. Now they use Greek Aristotelian philosophy to explain yeah. how Christ is that really is his body and blood. <clears throat> Lutherans. Well, we're right in line with the Catholics in this. We think it's his body, his real presence. It's his, he is bodily presence. So we, when it comes to the spectrum, and usually like Val's probably more recently seen this than some, but you know, my foundations class, I have a whole spectrum. Yeah. I put up a slide and I forgot to put it up for this one, but we're pretty close to Catholics yeah. because we still see it's a sacrament. Mm -hmm. It brings you forgiveness. It brings you the body and blood of Christ, mm -hmm. but we just don't need to use Aristotle to explain it. And in fact, we would say, no, it's still bread and wine, but it also, it's, yeah. it's not the, the act of the priest that now changes the bread and wine. Right. It's the word of Jesus, and this is where you can make a connection, because now it's the word put with the bread and wine that now reveals Christ. Now, the and Luther will say, boy, I'm just probably confusing everybody, but it, Luther will say that Jesus, because Jesus is God, and God's right hand is not a place, but it's everywhere. Jesus is already in with and under the bread and wine. 
but we don't experience it that way because we're of sin. But when we get his word and promise put with that bread and wine, that bread and wine becomes the host. It becomes the giver, the bringer, the vehicle, the sacrament of his real presence. So we just want to, we stop short of the Roman Catholic Church feeling like we need to kind of explain it or make it, you know, that it changes something. We just said, no, it's bread and wine, but it's actually the body and blood of Christ. Lutherans love paradox. You here's, know, how settled, yeah. here's how I settled that. Yeah. Jesus, the living bread. Yeah. The bread that came down from heaven. Jesus. Yeah. Period. There you go. So do I have permission to still kind of see you have in these words? I think you can sorry. if you go indirect. <laughs> okay. Well, you, of course, have permission to see it, because the Roman Catholic Church actually, in a different way, sees it here, um, and, the, and the, the other reformers do. I was a Eucharistic minister in the Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah. And boy, you had, there was, you had to be really careful on how you handle I love these things. You just, yes. it was yeah. very careful, because this was really Jesus. Right. That's why you reverence when you come into church because the reserve host is up there. Jesus is up there. You know, it's changed. I I feel like that. Um, yeah. I, I feel like that that you can go wrong that direction, but I also think you can go wrong with the once you just start saying it's just a spiritual presence, yeah. then uh just pass it down the aisle. It's fine, you know, but wait a minute, something more is going on here. Yeah. So let's do this very reverently and, you know, mm -hmm. um, but again, I don't say Presbyterians or Methodists or not Christian or wrong or either way with Catholics either. Um, one of, when we had our full communion agreement, which we still have with the Presbyterian Church and Reformed Church, um, you know, there was a phrase in one of the books, actually, the dean of my seminary was working on this when I was in seminary. Gosh, that was a long time ago. Um, uh, said, you know, may, had the statement, because we can't agree on the mode of how Christ is present, it shouldn't, you know, fracture us yeah. from being able to fellowship together and be together and that's the church today i mean we i know we've got some of you that have lutheran background but like sharon said you know she, she comes from baptist and you know we got val here who comes from oh, you know, so many and we're a we're a mixed um, yeah. uh, you know a mixing bowl of you know different christian expressions i always then like so i like to say hey these are all christians but look at the beautiful beauty of the, the Lutheran way of looking at the Lord's Supper. Um, and I guess the last thing I would say, I'm not I'm sure it won't be the last thing. The, the other thing I'd add is notice how different, how unique we are. We were probably, the, the Episcopalians got this from Luther. This is one of the things where the Protestant Reformation got in there in the Anglican um, tradition. But um, look at how unique we are. What does the Roman Catholic Church say about the bread and wine? It can't carry Christ unless it changes. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did the Baptist Church say? It just can't carry Christ. Yeah. Presbyterian, there. well, it can, but it's just a spiritual presence. So, but we say, yes, it can. The natural, the bread and wine can. And this is where Luther, then he really doubles down. He says, look, if you can't believe that Jesus is truly in with and under the bread and wine, are you sure you believe that he was fully God and fully flesh at the same time? And, and then he that? fully died and rose again. Right. I right. mean, then you're going to question all kinds yeah. of things. And, and of course, he's not completely, I don't think he's completely right, because I absolutely, our Presbyterian friends believe in the internal. <laughs> but this is what he was concerned about. Um, that, you know, yeah, you can do both. Um, Please. If Jesus was just a spiritual thing, then it would be a seance. Right. It, that's right. That's right. Very yeah. Hot. yeah, it would be. Yeah. It would See, be. These things just come into me. Yeah, nice, uh, nice. Sam. Nice. And that's really what, that's what Gnostic, this, this whole heresy of yeah. Gnosticism or Docetism, separating the two nations, uh, is, is the problem with that. Yeah, yeah.
Please, Val. Um, in my one of my classes, seminary classes, it's non-denominational mixed in. And they were asking because we were studying different uh, opinions and interpretations of sacraments. Yeah. And so one of the worship pastors, when I explained this, basically said, I don't understand how you could kind of believe that. And incarnation was actually the one thing when I said, well, do you think that, mm -hmm. and then explain the incarnation. So okay, I'm bringing that up is important. And I think it is something that most people non-denominationally would actually go, oh, wait a minute. That's actually what this is a analogous to, to some degree. Yeah. Because they will absolutely say that is a foundational primary aspect of your Christian belief. It is the incarnation. So if yes. I, I said, you don't have to agree with that, but if you have to see that that is what this is going back to, so can you make a space for people who would look at it that way? Right. So oh, that nice. was just a that wow. Good to my for you. Good this. for you. That's great. That's great. Yeah. It really is important because they're seeing those two things joined together, yes. and then they see that Jesus is the Word. So all it really is then all those things are being represented in that symbol. Yeah. So, yeah. Is there Excellent. any? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Sharon. Uh, is there any? Uh, maybe I'm thinking right now. Well, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And is communion designed to, um, or was given to us so that we connected directly to any one of those parts of the uh, Trinity? Because once you connect to one, you're connected to all. Is that, am I right? Yeah, absolutely. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. Mm -hmm. And and. You know, in other places in John, when you when you see Jesus, Jesus, you see the Father, and you know, yeah. yeah. So it was it John? Yeah, yeah. It, please, no, that's beautiful. That's great. That's great. And I also I, think, I many times think of of uh, prayers. I, I think of God. Well, maybe that's because I was brought up, you know, more Baptist. But to me, God has always been the main focus. And and Jesus was his son to 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 show me how to be a real person <laughs> and connect, you know, how to be an actual flesh and blood myself. And right. I'm going to go away. Uh, and obviously my spirit is going to live forever. And so it all goes, it, it pulls everything that God has created. That's why life is so so urgently important. Because anytime we have life. Where did we get it from? We didn't get it from ourselves. It came from the Lord. And he He formed us. And so anytime we, we disregard life, we're disregarding the whole thing because Jesus came in his body. What if he was destroyed? You know, I mean, yeah. uh, everything that goes against what God creates, I think, is, is a problem. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Flesh and blood is good. It is earthiness. You know, we're not against, uh, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it is it is good, God said. And um, I think that's another reason why I think our view of the Lord's Supper is so cool is because we, it's like a theology of the natural. It can yes. bear God. Oh, now God. it needs the word. It needs the word to get that to happen because of sin we're not like what some people would say pantheists, where pantheists is in means in God. So pan in theist God. So like a lot of religions are, you know, everything is God and I am God. And you know, we're yeah. that's not what we're talking about. But yet we live and move and have our being in God. God is everywhere, God surrounds us, but we don't experience God. So something like the Lord's Supper says, yeah, if you put Jesus is the event of Christ with its significance and his promise with the bread and wine, then that bread and wine can can do it. Well, it, it has cannot, to, yeah, it yeah. has to connect us with eternal life. I mean, uh, yeah. losing Bert, it All makes me so much more eternity. aware of, of what eternity means. And hey, everybody, better listen up. Better look at yeah. those ten commandments and try to try to kind of live. We fall down all yes. the time on them. But yeah. that's where grace comes in. But if we don't yeah. even think about it or use it as, as a conscience uh, builder, where are we? 
Yeah. So let's. Uh, I just have one thought. Please, to please, with, please. Within, and I Go. was thinking, moving away from communion, and I'm thinking about times when I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. And to me, that's feeding me bread and blood also. I'm being fed. Yeah. I'm being fed because the Holy Spirit, um, because I'll pray and I'll say, I'll have a clue what I want to do, and then I'll get some insight. You know, oh, like beautiful. shape up, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> and to me, that's being fed, also. Absolutely. And, and that that's not physical. It's not the communion, but it's a still a feeding. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's what God is doing in, with, and under, and through the bread and wine. That encounter gives you this yeah, experience. Being fed. Yeah. Yes, be, being fed. Yeah. Again, that's fabulous. This is another thing Luther said is we're tactile people. Yeah. Yeah. We need something. We need God to become tactile. That's the incarnation. But now how does that tactile God come to us now? Well, yeah, words are great, but also he gives us water and baptism and he gives yeah. us bread and wine at the Lord's Supper to, because I'm a tactile person. I mean, I know you probably, most of you have heard me say this analogy a million times, but when I try and explain the real presence to little kids, I just say, yeah. do you like to hear mom or dad say, I love you? Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but do you like it when they give you a hug? Oh, that's the best. I know I usually can say that with my kid. My yeah. kid can say I love you. But <clears throat> of course, I'm a, my, one of my love languages is touch. So. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm a Lutheran. Because <laughs> I need the Lord's Supper. But anyway, yeah, so no, that's beautiful. Well, and that's, I mean, God, that's kind of where I was going too, is this, in God, this whole theme of incarnation is carried through. So, you know, God incarnate in Christ, Christ incarnate in a supper, Christ mm -hmm. incarnate in us through his gifts or through the spirit. And then that's how Christ works in the world then is through this, flesh you know yes um, yes so yeah. he's he's a god that likes to work through flesh that's it how you doing doug and barb doing good thumbs up you're good nope, yeah still here. yep <laughs> just want to make sure you can chime in if you wanted to yeah good um sharon brought up the term eternal life we probably should dig down into that a little bit yeah is that a good thing to do all right so here we go. Uh, let's do some study on eternal life. What do you, you know, the average person, and of course, understandably, when they hear the term eternal life, what do you think of? You think of heaven. You think of what happens after you die, right? Mm -hmm. Lasting life. So um, that's another way this term is translated. So let's dig down into it. So the word for eternal is Ionios or ion, 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 which is I think where we get the word. What's the word for a certain period of time? Um, eon or something. Um, but it might be if we want to do my Greek fat, big fat Greek wedding. Uh, <laughs> that English word comes from this Greek word. You know? um, but uh, so Ionia, Ionios um, is e the word that's translated as eternal, and then we get the phrase life, which as Kim alert, alluded to earlier, in Greek, there's a number of different word terms for life. Suke, which is your being, but bios, where we get biology, is physical life. Like, you know, I'm alive or I'm not kicking, you know, this type of thing. So zoe is where people that are named zoe, that's where this comes from. Um, uh, today uh, is is a different term for life. It's a, it's not just biological life. It's this other life. So now we got eternal with life. Now this is put together a lot. And the best way I think for us to get that at this is just to go to a wonderful Roman Catholic uh, scholar who's probably written the best commentary on the Gospel of John still. Uh, Raymond Brown, um, and he has um, some lovely, um, let's see, is this, uh, let's see, he has some lovely, uh, no, I gotta bring this up, I don't know why my space, my uh, bar is, uh, so, okay, 
Um, uh, yeah, I'm having trouble with my computer here. But anyway, so he's done a specific word study on the big words in the Gospel of John, like agape and uh, truly and um, see. And of course, you'll see, uh, you know, all, all these great words. So here we got Zoe, eternal life. So number six. So we're going to scoot down there. Um, and then he's got abide, remain. Um, that's a big study. So um, I should have a hyperlink there, but I'll just have to skip down till we get to um, let's see. So which one was it? Let's see. Let's see. Um, I just got to get down to, okay, see, I don't think I passed it yet. See, like it should be. Oh, I see why I can't get to it. Now we got some. All right. Bill does not know how to use his computer. All right. Here we go. All right. So now, obviously, life is a favorite Johannine theological word. And as blah, 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 as pointed out, the fourth gospel may be called the gospel of life. For in 2031, it, we hear this summary, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have what? Zoe, life in his name. So um, the chief purpose of which the gospel is written, that you may have life in his name. In particular, the expression Zoe, Ionios, eternal life occurs 17 times in John and six times in the letter, first letter of John. Um, age eon segment of time is the Greek rendering of olam, a period of time without visible beginning or end. Um, even without the qualifying adjective ionios, zoe in John does not refer to natural life. That's kind of what I was saying. It's not bios. It's not that kind of life that we're talking about. Rather, uh, psyche is used for that life to which death is a terminus. Um, yet, of course, it's natural life, which we must have originally suggested by the use of the term life as a symbol for a special gift of God. Natural life is a person's most treasured possession. Life is therefore a good symbol to indicate the most precious and divine gifts lying beyond a person's reach. Uh, since first thinks and now had analogically of God, it was appropriate to speak of God's life on the analogy of man's life. And God's greatest act of friendship to a person was described in terms of a person receiving a share in God's life. The relation of this symbolism to that of becoming God's children is obvious. Um, so, so now life is that gift of God being, it's God's life. Uh, it's relationship with God, uh, forgiveness, grace, mercy, all of that, that now we have, you're a child of God, that, that, that's life. The fact that I can walk through this broken world and know I'm a, I'm precious to God. That's, that's the life we're talking about, but we get eternal put on that life. So now that gives it a little bit more of a dimension. Now he'll keep going here. Um, let's see, we want to, we, we can skip over the Platonic stuff. The Hebrew expression underlying the Greek occurs once in the um, uh, proto-canonical, those intertestamental books, and Daniel 12, 2, where it is said that the just who are dead awake to um, Hayi Ola, the life of the eternal age. The rarity of the expression is explained by the fact that only Wow. Okay, we're going to keep moving here. What was a Qumran? Thank you for looking at Qumran. That's really important. Good. Jewish writing. So you see, he does a word study. He's like, okay, what's the Hebrew background? So he does this big thing. But I don't want to spend for um with this background in mind, let us turn to what John means by eternal life. This is the life by which God Himself lives and by which and which the Son of God possesses from the Father. So Jesus. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. So now we're getting, this is like God's, God's godness, God's life, God's power, God's, you know, so, so you can see this light, this word zoe just starts to explode with like me. We think of it as physical life. No, it's more than that. It's God's life. 
that passage 526 is really important, isn't it? Um, and it's right on the, be, just on the heels. And then we get, as the living father sent me and I live because of the father. So whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. So now it isn't just, we're going to be alive because of Jesus. No, we're going to have God's stuff, God's power, God's wow. godness <laughs> in us yeah. because, because of this. Um, uh, so, yeah. Sacred. Okay. What's that, Sharon? It's sacred. Yes, absolutely. Now our life is sacred because it's it's holy. It's it's in God and God is in us. Um, and for this purpose, the son has come among people. Uh, you know, uh, the thief comes only to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, what do the prosperity gospel people do with that passage? See, Jesus said, I came so that you'll be rich. You'll have abundant life. No, it's not talking about bios. It's talking about God's godness, God's life. That's And we'll have that abundant. That may mean you're rich or it may mean you're poor. You, you can have abundant life. I tell you what, I've seen some Christians in Ethiopia and Central America, as well as here in our cities, that have almost nothing, and they have yeah. abundant life. Okay, so isn't, isn't our mind like the satellite uh, <laughs> of us that that is kind of like what we receive? Or anyway, I'm thinking of we we have something built into our physical bodies that has a little receiving device that comes yeah. along with the original creation and comes along with the bigger life, like you're saying. A connect that mm -hmm. is connected to God. How's He going to talk to us? Not through our hands and our feet. No, it goes through our mind. And Paul says, "Let your mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus." So if our minds are contaminated, we can't we can't receive. Uh, and I would say, what what is what gets something into your mind? Well, your we're ears. we're your ears. Your yeah. ears, what you hear, what you listen to is, right. is is and and your eyes to the sense of the sense of learning and receiving something. But right. But you'll know in the Bible, a lot of people saw Jesus and didn't believe, but hearing him is a whole other thing. So I, I'm with you, Sharon. You know, the renewal of your mind. Doug loves that passage. Um, you know, but how does that renewal happen through hearing and through the word? So um so believe and but here now, how do we believe? Well, we hear the word. And so belief in him is the only way which people can receive God's life. So this this kind of life, God so loved, think about the famous John 3 16. God so loved the world that he may gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal, eternal life. So note typically the way we hear John 3 16 is so that something will happen to me good after I die. Yes, that's the way we hear that, right? Now I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it's there, but I'm saying that's only touching the surface. <laughs> Eternal life is something we have now. It's God's Godness, God's power, God's being, being a child of God. All of that, that promised living with the promise, living with in communion with God. Now, they know that. Did they know that? Did they know that's what that word meant? Mm. But I think we Good have question. to be careful of saying all of this comes through our thinking and our brain or whatever you were saying, because there are people of all intelligence that receive God. You you don't have to have right? a smart yeah. analytical brain. Right, right. I mean, I was kind of hearing. Yeah, that I think what Sharon was saying is that it's renewal of our mind, that it's, it is what we comes into our thinking and stuff but no not it, you don't have to be smart you don't have to be oh, okay. uh, you don't have to be uh you yeah. know uh okay. no. <clears throat> whatever iq is up there well when we baptize babies they they have that word and that's what that's right that's right we're, we're gonna be like little children yeah, yeah now you're really now you're really throwing us over the edge because can can little <laughs> little babies have this eternal life yeah. they didn't yeah. make a decision yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. But we would say yes, because yeah. it's a God gift. Yes. It's a God yeah. gift, not our doing. Yeah. And so, so, so certainly. Um, but the one thing that I thought you were going to go to is, but we do have to be careful about our thinking. Yes. I will. See, because stuff I've gone on long. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so because if you take away the word, yeah. Then what? What are you left with? Just my own rational yeah. ability. Yes. Well, guess what? Some people work the rational argument and become believers in God. But a lot of people, that's how they get out of fellowship yes. with God. Is they? I can't make it make sense. Yeah. It. I can't just rectify this theodicy question of how can God be all powerful and good and allow all this crap to be going on in the world. I can't figure it out. So therefore, oh, I shut my ears. And, and that's where Luther will come around and say about our intellect, reason and thinking is good, wonderful, but don't make it a God. Yeah. Because <laughs> reason alone will land you very empty and without. You, we, that's where we need the word, the revelation, the bread from heaven. Yeah to come in and create faith and keep us in faith. And yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, I'm a very, you know, as you can see, I'm a geek on all this stuff, theology and history, and, and I get a little head heavy, but, you know, it's actually, if, if it feeds my faith and heart, then we're in good shape, you know, um, but uh, if but it, it's got limits. I mean, I can't tell you if if I don't know all the reasons for de-churching, but this is I think the biggest one, right yeah. here. People people think they're they think they can think their way into God, and usually they just think their way out of God. Mm -hmm. And but that's not anti-intellectual. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's great to ponder. Well, is the Earth? 7,000 years old or 5 billion years old or, uh, or you know, I, I think all these things are good. But if that's all, if if we could get ourselves to get, you know, I, I hadn't put it together this way. Sorry, you guys get to listen to me think how that. Um, remember in Galatians where Paul's talking about the law and he says, if you could justify yourself by the law, then Christ died for no reason. I think you could also say, if you could think your way into heaven, then Christ died for no reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I have to remember that. And, and okay. About that time with the with the Reformation and Erasmus kind of starts. So there's this humanist movement. Yeah. And Erasmus had the Bible. And yes. when you know when Luther put the Bible in people's hands, and that kind of spread this movement of people just looking at this and going, "What the what?" You know. Right. And so we need a preacher yes right we have this word that we need a preacher we need and not just like a pastor preacher but someone to deliver and yeah. speak the the good news uh and luther is so doubled down on this i mean he would of course he loved to say hyperbole and get people thinking it but he would say you know in one sense it, it's too bad the word was ever written down mm -hmm. <laughs> Because, you know, but of course it had to be to preserve it. Because the word for him isn't just paid words on a page. It's preached. It's a message coming into the ears. And that's what the word is. It is and so that's way, by the way, going back to our Thursday class, yeah, I was gonna say, where we don't yeah. make the Bible into an idol. Yeah. You know, is, is So it's either become an idol of, in and of itself, or it's become an idol of this is ridiculous and um I, I don't know. yeah well right because now like oh i can't make sense of this in the bible or i can't do this and i because but no no that's okay <laughs> you know, I, yeah yeah go ahead sharon yeah. uh, well i'm thinking of the various types of intelligences that's i mean god has unlimited things that make each one of us unique. And so one person can figure things out senses, you know, through their senses if they're blind and deaf, like Helen Keller, and she learned that way. And so her intelligence was hers, but it doesn't mean that all the, that, that a different kind of intelligence 
is it hasn't got the right receivers in their mind. So, I mean, that we are all unique. None, none of us is, is the other or like the other, but we have to study these things to figure out how we can best reach people. And um, so that's one of the, uh, the values of understanding that there are lots of different ways to learn. But yeah, yes. nobody is 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 definitely so so uh, one sided that they are only that one intelligence. It's like your personality; you have a, a predominant personality, but the rest of things are also going on. Yes, yes, beautiful. Who said faith seeking understanding? Like faith. it starts with faith, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just think, um, yeah, there's all kinds of intelligence, emotional intelligence, but, um, and I think we don't want to exit the world of thought and reason. Apologetics are important. We got to jump into that because the, that's a, a barrier for people. Right. It, it, like, um, you know, like, wow, I can't make sense of theodicy. Well, okay, so I can't make sense of this problem. Well, Okay, there's ways to re reason through that, and that's helpful and good. Hopefully, so that somebody will have that barrier removed, and then they can actually hear the gospel. Um, uh, and so that's that's really what apologetics is: is getting people to go, "Oh, okay, I'll listen now. <laughs> I won't pull, I won't hold up the, the the barrier." So no, that's that's really helpful. Um, you know that I also. Just a real quick connection. The stuff I shared about how Christ is present in the Lord's Supper, that God is everywhere. And so he's our God, Jesus is already in with and under the bread and wine. Yeah. So so you put his word together and, and of course he's there for you physically. All of that means if the only reason I'd even talk about that is so you can believe given and shed for you. Because that's all that matters. Just like going back to what you were saying, Linda, you know, it's like, oh, I brought it just as a child, trust it. He said, this is, I can't explain how he's really present in the bread and wine, but you know what? That's what he said. So I'm just going to say, Jesus, you said it, you promised it. I'm going to receive it. Um, I, I, you know, yeah, I, but, but the reason I go into that is help you just simply go, okay, it's okay. Now I see that through a glass darkly. Yeah, right. Now and now I'll just put my hands out and trust. That's why you do that. That's why you do apologetics. Yeah. Yes. And children don't have the filter system that adults acquire as they go on. And on. Absolutely. So the best way to uh, teach somebody something is to get them when they're young. Like me, I was like like six years old. Yeah. My dad would take us to church. Sure. I'll, I'll never forget the day he said, well, next week we're going to make sure we're here. And we were always there. Me to sit in the front row, me and my brothers. Yeah. Um, he goes, because Jesus is going to be here next week. And I went, Jesus? I was so excited. I was like seven years old. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited. Oh, All week great. I'm thinking about everything else. I got, we got the church and I'm looking around and waiting for him to walk out, you know, or float down or something, you know, and he never showed up. I cried for like a week. Oh. Because at that point I had not grasped. Yes, but he again. was talking about the Lord. You were having communion. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I never could have. Oh, I'm, I'm going to write that story down. But a child, but a child yeah. is like a sponge because yeah. I write a school bus I know um they're like they're like a sponge it doesn't matter if they're paying attention to you or if you, they're ignoring you they are sucking it all in they're Absolutely. hearing it they're recording it they may not respond to you anything else but they have a, they have acknowledged it and they've stored it so you get children when they're really young and start absolutely stuff, it's just yeah. such a better understanding when you get to be old like me but, but, <laughs> but, but you and i are named linda darn it <laughs> so so but the way i'm gonna use i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah give her i'm gonna i'm gonna use your story in a different way i'm gonna use it to say um boy i, I just i don't know if this is god the holy spirit but when you get people together reading the word, the crazy, amazing stuff happens. So I've been wrestling very greatly with how do I motivate about 
a third to a half of the congregation to make word and sacrament minute receiving the Lord's Supper on Sunday morning mm -hmm. a priority. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Roman, I'm not going into the law of Roman thought, you gotta be there every Sunday or blah blah blah. Because Lutherans, we don't want to do that. Yeah. We we want people to freely. And everybody has their own journey. And sometimes you're in church, sometimes you're not. Yeah. The live stream is great. I'm not putting anybody down that because you know sometimes we're sick or sometimes we're tired and sometimes we're sick and tired and or lazy and, or lazy okay but now the lazy part that's where i'm gonna how do i get to that part yeah. now and the way i'm going to do it is to yeah. tell your story okay and i'm going to say jesus is coming this sunday yeah oh god I and you know what yeah, he's coming great. every sunday but you don't tell him that you just tell him jesus is coming next that's sunday. it there. and all the kids will but, be there but <laughs> But see, I think that's where I think we have a belief problem. Yeah. If you really believe that Jesus is going to show up in this tangible way, not just in the Lord's Supper, but in the speaking of the word and in the communion of saints, and then if we really believe that, we would go, I'm getting to church. Because adults start building a filter system yes. and they just tell themselves, I'm not going to listen to that. Right. It doesn't. So, so, because I'm trying yeah. to figure out, because we have a, I don't want to call it a crisis yeah. here, but we have a problem. Yeah. I know. We have a problem. The church um, is empty. Well, what, comparatively, what, compared to what, what it should be when you have 19. 900 members. Yeah. COVID 19. You know, we should have to do a third service. Yeah. So, you know, and there's all kinds of reasons for that. So I'm not lumping everybody in the people of grieving. They have lose job. They have, they have crises and they'll all. I I'm they not I'm not them. judging anyone, but I'm trying to go. How do I motivate people to come? Now you know we have the live stream is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Families are away at a soccer tournament. You know because you, you can't have your kid play tournament or you know, select sports if you don't give up your Sundays. That's just that we live in that world. Now. Or you are, or they go on vacation, so they watch it. Or somebody's, you know, getting up there in age a little bit and they can't get up and rolling before two o'clock. Sometimes, sometimes. Um, you, you know, <laughs> I'm getting there fast. And, you know, they're, they're, or they're sick or they're in the hospital. There's True. one member... What you know, yeah, like Bert, exactly, yeah. Sharon. Except um, that except that when he was when he was unable to go, it was it was nice to be able to turn on TV, but it wasn't the same at all. And we know that. Go. And every yes. one of us that sits down to watch, you know, I'm sure somehow we just know this is the best I can get from this. It's it's the closest right. I can come to church, but I'm not there. And yes. maybe and there's a good. way to to do some innovative dip worship once in a while, you know, that comes in randomly. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, like when when sometimes there have been uh, services where we've been asked to turn to our neighbor and greet them or something, you know, within the within the sermon itself, or or shake the hand of the person next to you, and actually end up doing something that's that's here to hear yeah. that other people wouldn't be having if they're home, yeah. and because. You know, yep. it's it's really hard to. Uh, I'm thinking yep. maybe to stop start live streaming, just have everything on a YouTube that they can't watch on Sunday morning. They can watch it later on a YouTube. Yeah, and, and they, that, well, yeah, and they can, and they can. Okay, we got two people wanting to jump they're, in. They're <laughs> making it easy for us to skip the regular okay, session so this, by the live thing. Yeah, you know, and you can actually record it and everything else. Yeah. So and then put it up later. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, that's a thought. So yeah. Still okay. getting the break. Yeah. 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 Well, I I just came back from uh, our reunion. Yeah. A what? A reunion. A, reunion, oh. a family reunion, mm -hmm. and we've been doing it for over thirty years. Okay. And we were there, and I thought, how does that compare to Facebook? Oh my gosh! I saw these people. They were right there in front of me. Mm. I gave them a hug. I saw their smile. It was so much better than just Facebook. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's like, good, too. We would never I'm do that. I'm going to use that Facebook. story, too. It's just, <laughs> this, it's, it's just this, oh, you've grown so much. You know, these little guys that you, you know, your cousins, 
kids and yeah. stuff like that. And you get into conversations. And my son, who has not been to a reunion for some time because he was in Napa, California, mm -hmm. doing it, said, oh, man, this is really incredible. Yeah. Real, I saw people that I didn't really recognize because they were only this, this, yeah, this shirt. Yeah. And he, he said, and it, the beauty of it, the love that was shared oh, amongst them. Nice. It's hard to do that with the screen. Yes, it is. There's really a get the energy that people they're, they're not uh, sure. Again, we're talking about being yeah, tangible yeah. people. Right. Yeah, yeah. Get that, share the, share the, what are you saying? Share yeah. the. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, let Mother Linda get in there and then, yeah, jump in then, in then there. Teresa and then I want to, I got to get us to the punchline. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, um, there is in, in, in being physically present, yeah, there is an yeah. energy. I, forget what you're too. Oh, I mean, there really is <laughs> because I could oh, lay yeah. hands on my horse Brothers. and heal. Yes. So that this oh, had to be the energy of my hands went to my horse. So there's a, we don't get that physical it's energy. Well, as, as amazing it is to have these backup options. Yeah. But, but people, I think, have gotten used to not being present with each other. I think that's true. And that's a COVID thing. Teresa, were you jumping in? I, I actually was saying the presence. You felt the yeah. presence. Yes. yes. And yeah. then I was also thinking about feeling the presence of Jesus when I come to church. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. No, please. Uh, no, no. It, this has been on my mind for a long time. In the sense that we are sure. saying, let's. That Part of me is when someone isn't coming, is there any place to go and say, since you haven't experienced this for a long time, we're going to bring it to you because they may not, they may go, oh, I didn't realize what I was missing. And there's a huge thing in their head that they don't need it unless they are getting here and they don't need it if they haven't gotten here. What if we're actually going to their homes and saying, yeah. You haven't been here for a while. We love you. It's like going and getting the 99. Yeah. I'm the, yeah. leaving the 99 to wow. go get the one. Yeah. At least yeah. giving them a chance mm -hmm. to see what they missed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about Actually, that? Too? I've been wanting to talk to you about that. I was thinking about can we expand, can we expand home? Communion, can we expand? Because it's okay. Okay, okay. You're saying, okay, yeah. you're, it's just a one time thing. Like instead of a revival, you know, uh, taking yeah. like a 10 meeting. I am, I am all ears. I am all ears. How are you doing down there? It doesn't Lord? have to be You're 25 doing... people from a church. Well, it, I, you well know, because if your kid does not come to visit you, yeah, are you going to yeah. go, oh, well, they want oh, to come seeing, to see yeah. me. Well, if I'm you come to my house and say, you. why don't you come to church? I will not miss another church. Well, I went to the church, <laughs> and I won't well, tell you which house. one, <laughs> but if, you have to and the pastor well, said, you need to just wipe them off the roll. So you have and to I thought maybe if you have people you unless you have somebody in your yeah. think, me, think, It's not just to leverage them, them in. Okay, I got it. That's okay. okay. So let me pull us. Let me pull us. No, that's okay. right. We let me pull us back at, and say this much though on this going out the nine. Um, leaving then. Ninety-nine to go to the morning. Yes, leaving yeah. the night. Thank you, God. Yeah. I get confused. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, the, that's you, right. Yes, me too. So you know, uh, each one bring one this rally day. Um, I keep asking each of the groups I'm in. I didn't plan to do it here, but I'll do it since you just laid it out there. Um, I think it would be cool to have an intentional group or couple or pastor. You know. It's almost impossible as far as time for me to see all of the people that, but, but um, how many of you, and you may not, you may know someone, and of course, I'm not talking about your family if they just typically don't ever come to church or something like that, but how many of you know someone who used to be every Sunday who isn't here now, yeah. who isn't coming? There's your one, there's, uh, you know, there's yourself, right, Linda, but, but there's your person, because again, uh, in my research with the sabbatical and all that, and reading this book and doing, reading tons of articles that everybody has given me, the, the de-churching topic, yeah. I have never had anything that even scratched the surface of how much input I've gotten for congregation. Yeah. This is on everybody's hearts and minds because it's our family, it's our yeah. spouse, it's our kids, it's our, it's our, you know, neighbors, it's our aunts, uncles, or whatever. But a lot of de-churching is casual. 
There wasn't a big issue. There wasn't, uh, you know, something bad happened at church. Now, sometimes those that's definitely one of the causes of dechurching. But the vast majority of it's casual. They just drifted away. Yeah. They just COVID hit, and I I stopped yeah. going. I just never returned. Yeah. Um, Satan's in on it. And you know, and there's no question that that's <laughs> underneath some of this. But 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 what they asked these same casual dechurchers. Yeah. What would it take for you to return? And what do they say? An invitation. Oh, oh. that's it. Oh. What did they say? Invitation. Oh. That's it. That's all it would take. Oh. Bite my kids, right? <laughs> well, why not? Now, now they now they may not be the the church because of that. You, no. they, you know, they have different reasons or whatever. But yeah. but if the vast majority, more than any other cause. Is because is people moving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they have a life change of some kind. Now there might be something much deeper underneath that, but the, but when they asked, what would it take for you to return? The vast majority said an invitation. You know what brought me back way back because um, I I yeah. didn't go for a long time, and then yeah. I went to um, Vinland, you know, yeah. to Vinland, because I had a very a crisis moment, and I was at the barn. And in the barn aisle, and I was having this crisis moment or whatever, and I told this lady who's a devout Christian what was going on and whatever. And so she came and she put her hands on my shoulders and prayed and said something like, Lord, you have said where two or more of us are together. You're there with us. We would lend an now, blah, 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 blah. And then I started going back to church. Yeah. But it took her yeah. intervening in my life at nice. that moment Perfect. to... Perfect. Yep. To pray for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me, so since we've talked about eternal life and life as God's life, um, how does how does that come to us? Um let's just finish with Mr. Brown here in this commentary. It's obviously, as you can see, I've highlighted a lot. There can be no doubt for John, eternal life is qualitative, qualitatively different from natural life, not just quantitatively, but qualitative. For it is a life that death cannot destroy. So mm -hmm. indeed, the enemy of eternal life is not death, but sin. In the line of apocalyptic thought sketched above, for John, eternal life is the life of the age to come now. Mm. So as we always talk about God's going to finish off everything and everything's quick, but that life is breaking in now. Now, of course, it's uh, it's not like that in its completion, but it's a little bit of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It certainly is. In the introduction that the dominant interest in John is one of realized eschatology. So that's the fancy word for the end happening now. A little bit of it. We sing it almost every Sunday when we sing that offertory hymn, which we are singing right now. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill us to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather harvest from the feast of sown and give us a what? A foretaste of the feast to come. That we're asking for life. We're asking for the life of everything being completed to just break in a little bit here and there. Okay, so how do we get this? In the gospel, eternal life and divine sonship are gifts already in the possession of the Christian. So you have eternal life right now. Did you know that? You have it right now. Um, and and by the way, just for the geek for the geekies of among us, sorry, that's a great compliment. Um, <laughs> eternal life in John is kingdom of God in the synoptics. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Jesus talks about the kingdom of God. John, eternal life is the like the, the his word for the kingdom of god or jesus's word however you want to put it since the difference between divine life and natural life is primarily qualitative the best translation of zoanis is eternal life rather than everlasting life he goes on the eternal life of the christian has come through the action of the son of god who became man in time one can possess eternal life only if one is a branch of the vine even the most, most gnostic statement in the gospel eternal life consists of this that they that they know you and only true god and the one whom you sent is rooted in a historic event in a way in which gnostic thought is not here and now here no means 
to be in vital and intimate relationship with the Father and Jesus. Okay, so it goes on. So how do we get this life? Um, I think I passed it. It's up here. Um, can, I, can I say one thing? I, uh, I think Bert had, he, he said something more than once. He would come home from church and say how, how much he, he valued the confession. Because yes. one of the biggest things is what did I where where did I go off and and where am I going off on a hab you know on a regular basis and not even know it or whatever but it isn't like you like it deals with all your guilt that's not the point it's kind of do a do a fact check on on where I am and what's what's going on what are the things I need to to open up to God about okay beautiful. And what if we saw the absolution, confession absolution, is a eternal light happening right, right now. now? Yes. A, a moment. That's a yeah. Positive. Yeah, right. That's, That's the one moment when you are sin free. Yes, right there. So you got, and so what if we understood the Lord's Supper as a eternal light? Right. Boom, like yeah. it comes through. What if we heard... When we have a friend, what if we thought about this very moment where we're in the word together yeah. as we're getting a little foretaste of the peace to come? So and, one of my, yeah, go ahead. And then we got to quit. And then Bert, Bert would say, um, oh, this darn fool. Uh, actually, then I think the next step of, of that is to say, Jesus also would say after he heals somebody, go and sin no more. So he's kind of reminding them what I just healed you of. Make sure you're aware. Watch out for that. Yeah. I, you know, and that almost happens naturally in mm -hmm. my view. The Holy Spirit's in you. And so now you're going to do that. But the, so the, here's the image. And I'm giving you the sermon ahead of time. <laughs> so I don't know why this image struck, made sense to me. But so this is eternal life. Okay. I'm going to have to demonstrate it. Okay, imagine that here's the eschaton, the end where everything is perfect over here somewhere, all of this. Um, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more hurt, no more agony, no more sin. You're uh, us in complete fellowship with Jesus, you know, not separated by time anymore. Just this is it. This is where we're headed. So mm -hmm. imagine you take that. And as a big canopy, and you just pull it all the way down, and it's just over the top of you now. You're not in it yet, but it's over the top of you. And now what happens is in word and sacrament is it you get little hearts where it breaks in. Because it's we're already in it. We have eternal life. It's not something we're waiting for. We have it right now, but we don't always experience it because sin, brokenness, world, but you come to church and you get a little. Yeah. yeah. You pray. Sometimes you pray. Sometimes you have that conversation, mm -hmm. or a friend comes and you're in a crisis and yeah. they put their hands on yes. you and you pray. And the touch was really. And the fun. touch. Yeah. Yes. The touch. You know, yeah. you get a phone call. Somebody visits you in the hospital. Yeah. That's yeah. eternal life. Okay, we got to quit. <laughs> Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this little foretaste of the feast to come. Um, in this Bible study today um, for those at home and those here. Um, and we pray that it will just bear great fruit for us as we continue our journey and treasure that we have eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right. Yes, because that's what did Isaiah experience? He got a vision of that. He got transported to that, although it's the temple, but that was the temple. Yes, and so yeah, the liturgy is helps those. Because helps yeah, us be here. present to what's so happening. Yeah. 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 I know it's, 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 a, yeah. it's still yeah. true yeah. because oh, we got the brand. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Don'ts. Oh, yes. 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 I haven't yes. thought about the word gift. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just think that. I mean, honestly, God, God's just yes. saying this. Yes. 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 I have an exchange with them on a church, but for some that. reason, I sure I'm saying it's true. Yeah, why? Like, no excuse for So I guess we to Thursday. I have no other non All right, I got to stop. Beautiful. This was awesome. Thank you, everybody at home or on Facebook. You've been listening. God bless you.